This is a tutorial on understanding logarithmic functions. The first thing that we have to understand about logarithmic functions is that they're basically just exponential functions written a different way. If we have y is equal to the log base b of x, then we can take this expression and rewrite it or rearrange it. This is exactly the same as saying x is equal to b with a y exponent. This x comes outside, we keep our base b, and this y becomes that base's exponent. So if I had 4 is equal to the log base 3 of 81, I take this 81 outside, I keep my base, and then what is outside becomes the exponent of that base. So 4 is equal to the log base 3 of 81 is the same as writing 81 is equal to 3 to the fourth power. So these two expressions mean exactly the same thing. Now logs are often called the inverses of exponential functions because if I have the function y is equal to the log base b of x and I tried to find the inverse of this, well I would swap my x and y's. I would say x is equal to the log base b of y. And then if I wanted to solve this for y, I would have to write this back into an exponential form. So this would become y is equal to b to the x power. Well, this is also the inverse of that. So logs are usually considered the inverse of an exponential function. But remember that you can always write either a logarithmic or an exponential function in the other form. Exponential to logarithm, logarithm to exponential. So if logarithms are the inverses of exponential functions, what does that mean? Well, that means that the domain of a logarithmic function is equal to the range of its inverse exponential function. And the range of a logarithmic function is equal to the domain of its inverse exponential function. So if I had y is equal to 2 to the x, the domain of this function, well x can be any real number. I could plug in a million for x. I could plug in 2 for x. I could plug in negative a million for x. Any x value I can come up with, I can plug into this equation. My range though, my y values, these all have to be positive. Y has to be greater than zero because there's no value of X that I can plug in here that will make Y zero. If I plugged in negative a million for X, I would get a very small value for Y because negative exponents make this a fraction. So this would be a very small fraction. Think of it as Y is equal to one over two to a million but there's no value of x that makes this zero. So our range is that y has to be greater than zero. Well, if I find the inverse of y is equal to two to the x, again, I just swap my x and y. This becomes x is equal to two to the y. And now I want to solve this for y. So I write this as a logarithm. I say y is equal to the log base two of x. So here is my inverse function. And what is the domain and range of this function? Well, the domain of this function is just the range of the exponential. Well, our range of this exponential was y has to be greater than zero. So the domain of this function is that x has to be greater than zero. So you can't take the log of zero or a negative number because that's outside of the domain. The range of this function, though, is the domain of our previous exponential. Well, the domain of that was x could be all real numbers, which means y can be all real numbers. So the domain of a logarithm is that x has to be greater than zero. You have to have a positive number. But the range of a logarithm is that you could get any number. The answer to this could be any number. So now let's talk about the graphs of logarithmic functions. Well, remember, 
A logarithm is usually considered the inverse of an exponential. So here in blue we have the graph y is equal to 2 to the x. The inverse of this function would be y is equal to the log base 2 of x. And here we have that graphed in green. Because these functions are inverses one another, that means they have to be reflected across the line y is equal to x. So every point on our exponential graph can be reflected across this line, and we would get every point on our logarithm graph. Also notice that our domain here is restricted. We have this asymptote for the exponential function, and that's the x-axis, because our exponential function can never equal zero or become a negative number. There's nothing we can plug in for x that would make y be negative or zero. And when we reflect this function, or this asymptote across the line y is equal to x, we end up with a vertical asymptote here. Remember, there's no x value that we can plug in that's zero or negative. So our y value gets very large in the negative direction as we get closer and closer to x is equal to zero. But again, we can never have x is equal to zero because that's outside of the domain of our logarithmic function. Next, let's talk about translating the graphs of logarithmic functions. If we have the parent function y is equal to the log with a base of b of x, then a translated version would be y is equal to the log base b of x minus h and then plus k. This h because it's inside the logarithm function, this gives us a horizontal translation. h is horizontal. Or in the positive x direction. k gives us a vertical translation. Or in the y direction. So if I wanted to graph y is equal to the log base 2 of x plus 2 minus 3. This would mean that my h is negative 2 and my k is negative 3. The easiest way to graph this equation is to first graph its parent, y is equal to the log base 2 of x. So let's do that. I'm going to select several x values plug them into this parent equation, y is equal to the log base 2 of x, and solve for y. x values that I'm going to choose, well, since this is a logarithm, they have to be greater than 0. So I'm going to plug in 1, 4, 8, and 1 half. Now if I plug in 1 for x, I would have y is equal to the log base 2 of 1. If I rewrite this as an exponential, that means 2 to the y is equal to 1. Now 1 I can rewrite as 2 to the 0 power, because anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. So if I have 2 to the y is equal to 2 to the 0, that means y is equal to 0. I could follow all the same steps. And I would find out that if I plug in x is equal to 4, or y is equal to the log base 2 of 4, y would be equal to 2. If I plugged in 8 for x, my y would be equal to 3. And if I plugged in 1 half for x, my y would be equal to negative 1. And I can plot these points. 1, 0 is right there, 4, 2 is right there, 8, 3, and 1 half, negative 1. If I connect these points with a smooth curve, and I remember that the y-axis is an asymptote for this function, because x can never be equal to 0, my graph would look something like this. So that's the graph of y is equal to the log base 2 of x. But we're not here to graph y is equal to the log base 2 of x. We want to graph y is equal to the log base 2 of x plus 2 and then minus 3. 
we're graphing the same function except we have an h value of negative 2 and a k value of negative 3. That means that every point on this graph is moved to the left 2 or in the negative direction in the x 2 units and then in the negative y direction 3 units because k is negative and h is negative. So if we take this point for 2 and we go back 2 or left 2 and then down 3 we would have that point. If we take 8 3 left 2 and down 3 we would have that point. 1 0 we go left 2 and down 3 1 half negative 1 left 2 and down 3 Connect these points. Notice that our new graph has a slightly different vertical asymptote. Instead, it is the line x is equal to negative 2. It has this different asymptote because there's nothing that we can do that, that makes that 0, or we cannot plug 0 in into the log. So that's where our asymptote comes from except the values that make this equal to 0 start at x is equal to negative 2 instead of x is equal to 0. So if you want to graph a translated logarithmic function, it's often easier to graph its parent in blue here and then just move all the points that are being translated. And you'll get the translated function here in green. So now let's talk about common logarithms and natural logarithms. Common logarithms are typically what you'll see on a calculator. If you see a log without the base listed, this is called a common log. So if you see the log with no base of x, that always means that you have the log base 10. So your calculator most likely only calculates logs with a base of 10. So the log of 2 is equal to the log base 10 of 2. Again, if you see a log with no base, this is the common log, and that means its base is 10. Another type of popular logs are natural logarithms. Natural logarithms are logarithms with the base of e. Remember, e is that special number that's about 2.718. But if you ever see the log base e, it's usually written as ln, or the natural log of x. So if you see ln of x, that's the same as the log base e of x. If you see the natural log of 5, or ln 5, that's the same as the log base e of 5. These are the most common logs you'll see, and these are the logs that most calculators that can calculate logarithms can calculate. So now let's practice solving logarithmic equations. Here we have the log base 2 of x is equal to 3. We want to solve this for x. Now if we're going to solve this for x, that means we have to get x alone on one side of the equal sign. Well, x is stuck in a logarithm. The only way to get x out of the logarithm is to rewrite this as an exponential equation. If I rewrite this expression as an exponential equation, that means that 3 is a power of my base, so 2 cubed, and that's equal to x. I'm just rewriting my logarithmic expression as an exponential expression. So x is equal to 2 cubed. Now 2 cubed is 8, so x is equal to 8. Let's look at another example. Here we have the natural log of 2x plus 4 is equal to 10. Now remember, this is the log base e of 2x plus 4 is equal to 10. Now again, my x, along with its multiple of 2 and adding 4, this is all trapped inside of this logarithm. So we have to get it out if we're going to solve for x. And the easiest way to get it out is to rewrite this as an exponential equation. 
So we take our base, which is E, and that's to whatever's on the outside, power. So e to the 10th power. And that's equal to 2x plus 4, or whatever's inside the logarithm. Now e to the 10th power, that's equal to 22,026, approximately. And that's equal to 2x plus 4. Remember, e is just a number. This is 2.71 to the 10th power. Now to solve this for x, I just subtract 4. I get 22,022, and that's equal to 2x. Divide by 2 on both sides, and I'll get x is equal to 11,011. So if you're trying to solve for a variable that's inside a logarithm, you just take that logarithm and rewrite it as an exponential. That will get your variable outside of the log. This works in the other direction as well. Let's try using logarithms to solve exponential equations. If we have 3 to the 3x power, and that's equal to 12, we want to solve this for x. Now, 12 is not an even multiple of 3. 12 does not easily go into 3 to some power. So instead, let's rewrite this as a logarithm. I can write this as 12 with a base of 3 log is equal to 3x. I'm just rewriting my exponential as a logarithmic equation. Now the log base 3 of 12, that's about 2.26, and that's equal to 3x. Divide both sides by 3, and we get x is equal to uh, approximately 0 0.75 4. And that would be our solution. Let's try this again. Here we have e to the 10x plus 2 power is equal to 27. We need to get this variable out of the exponent of this e. So instead I'm going to rewrite this as the log base e of 27 is equal to 10x plus 2. Or we could rewrite this as the natural log, or ln of 27, is equal to 10x plus 2. Well, the natural log of 27, that's equal to approximately 3.3. .3. That's equal to 10x plus 2. If I subtract 2 from both sides, I'll have 1.3 is equal to 10x. Divide both sides by 10 and I get x is equal to 0 0.13. So if you ever have an exponential with a variable in its exponent, and you need to get that variable out of the exponent, you just rewrite it as a logarithmic equation so you can solve for the variable. So that completes the tutorial on understanding logarithmic functions.